Hi, thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean from Woodwork Journey, and today I'm going to be making a quick video about these blast gates. And they're super simple, super easy to make. Uh, I'll show you the measurements that I've used and all that sort of nonsense as well. So, the wall behind me has a bunch of tools. I've got my mitre um, saw there, I've got a, uh, a drill going on right here, I've got my um, uh, not a drill, a sander going on there. And there I've got my drill and over there I've got my bandsaw. In the corner there I've got my pneumatic NV900 I think it is, which is about a 1050 watt single motor shop vac attached to a cyclone and bin. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm attaching some 40 mil pipe work that I got from B&Q and it cost me £37. Now I will break this down a little bit further and I might even do a voiceover and show you that breakdown. But for today I'm just going to talk about these blast gates. Um, and these are just made out of plywood and um, they're super simple. Now the idea is pretty much the same as Keith from Rag and Bone Brown, which I'll link to down below for his video on making blast gates. Uh, but I did make these ever so slightly differently because it's for a smaller um, type of hose. So as I said, 40 mil hose is gonna be going in here. I've got push fit pipe that's gonna be doing the business. Um, and what I've used from this, let's go down and I'll show you. So this is as close as I get to ever making plans. Um, what I've done is I've got these uh, separate pieces here and I've got a couple of little bits right here as well. Um, but the sizes are pretty straightforward. I've got two pieces, both marked A in this drawing of 100 by 80 millimeter. I've got one piece of 170 millimeter by 60 millimeter, that's B. I've got two pieces of 80 millimeter by 20 millimeter, that's C. And I've got two pieces of 60 millimeter by 10 millimeter. Let me just see if I can get a better shot of that for you. There we go. And that is the uh, dimensions that I'm using for my 40 mil pipe. You can pause the video there, take a screenshot if you so wish. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm using. So how does it go together? Well, we've got one of these pieces right here. This is A. These are the two C pieces. This is the B piece right there. And then that is going on on top of that, allowing us to move that forward and backwards. The little bits that I've cut are just for little stops on the ends there, so you can't have it come all the way out. But uh, the idea is that because it can move all the way, hopefully it'll clean itself out if it has any kind of caught up um, dust or anything going through there. So uh, we will then have to drill through the top there to make sure that uh, we get everything in the right places. And I'll show you exactly how I go about doing that. Right, let me see if I can do this upside down. So these are, as I said before, the pieces marked as A on, uh, on here, which are 80 mil by 100. These are the main uh, pieces of ply that I'm using. I'm using 18 mil ply for this, uh, just because the pipe has to go through these and 18 mil gives me a nice uh, thick uh, grasping of the pipe. Now then, um, I didn't want to use 18 mil in the middle because that's two pieces of 18 mil, a third would have had it out here. And that's a big chunky block. And I don't think for a 40 mil pipe system that it really needed it, to be honest with you. So what I'm using there is, this is the piece marked as B and also C and D are gonna be the same. And this is, I think this is about seven mil ply this one. So that is what's going to be going in there and sandwiching between the two and that's what we'll be moving around. So first of all I'm going to use a little bit of Type Bond 3 that I've got here. I'm just going to glue the outside of one of the flat pieces and the reason I'm doing the outside is because I don't want um, the glue to spill out and uh, go into the middle of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the piece. So now with the glue on the outside I'm just going to pop that down. I'm going to lift that up on its side so I can just square it up. Make sure that that is all square and dandy. And then we're going to get the uh, nailer, wind that in there. Pop those three in there. Alrighty, so once again, that will move in there as exactly how we want it to. And what I've got to do now is pop this piece on the top of there. To do that, I'm going to pop a little bit of glue once again, just on the outside edge of the, uh, of the side pieces there. 
So there's no chance of squeeze out in the middle. Don't go too thick with it. Oh, I'm dropping glue everywhere. Okay, pop that on. Square it up. And boom. That is a bit snug, so what I might do is just give that a little bit of a sanding just to smooth this down a little bit more and get rid of that little spot of glue. But otherwise, that's that. For this, by the way, I'm just using a, uh, one of the Festool 60 grit pads. What I will do as well is just add a little tiny bit of uh, Keith Rag and Mow and Brown's um, uh, wax. And there you go. It's a little bit stiff, but it'll loosen up through use, and that's uh, all we've got to worry about. Now, let's get this drilled in. But first, actually, I'm going to stick a stopper just on the end, and I'll show you why in a second. I'm just going to use some of the Mitre Fast CA glue to do this. And that's because when we close that up, we want a stop so we can make sure that we drill in the middle. Okay, so this is a, uh, an X. So I've just found the center by joining up the corners. I'm now gonna make a pilot hole with the drill to go smack bang through everything. Now, the reason I put the stop on this side is to make sure that when that's all the way through, like so, that's gonna drill through all three layers and that's exactly what we want to keep everything straight. So let's get this started. doesn't matter if you have a little bit of blowout on the end because we're going to cut all of this away in a second. I've got a 40 mil Forstner bit, which is, this is a Bosch bit. I got this on Amazon for about 20 quid, uh, sorry, 16 quid I think this was. And uh, this is what I've cut the other ones with, so we'll crack on. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to allow this to sort of gently find the, uh, the pre-drilled hole that we've got and that will center itself quite nicely. And then the idea is to gently press this down as we're spinning. I've got the drill on the lowest speed it can go. Uh, sorry, the second lowest speed it can go. And we want to drill halfway through. We're then going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. All right, so that's just over halfway through. Now we're going to do the other side through there. And there we go. We've got a hole all the way through. I'm just going to clean that up with a little bit of sanding, some 180 grip sandpaper around the inside and just around the edges here to make sure that they're clean. And then that's that. Just like that. And just for the final piece of the uh, situation now, we can pop a little bit of that CA glue on there. A little bit on there. That's the stop on the side there. Hold it down for a short minute. And right there, that should be our blast gate done. And there's a nice snug fit in there as well, which is brilliant. I wanted to use um, plywood from this one, just because, I th I, it, as Keith says on his video, that um, drilling big holes in MDF is a bit of a nightmare. But also, um, that uh, I'm using this plywood because it's something that um, hopefully will be relatively stable in the workshop and not shrink and expand and all that sort of stuff. If you make it out of hardwood, then uh, then obviously it can move around and it doesn't take much movement for it to be really, you know, stuck. 
So, I mean, you can always do some things like filing down the edges and make it look a little bit prettier if you want to. I might do that, we'll see. But, uh, but that's it. That is my blast gate for my 40 mil system. And I've got four of them there. I've got one more to make, and then uh, I can start getting my system up and running. Ooh, exciting times. But yeah, hopefully you found this useful. Sorry if it's a little bit long. Uh, if you liked it, please do make sure that you like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be hitting uh, a thousand, a thousand subscribers soon. And that'll be, that'll be awesome. Right. Thanks very much. And I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye.